My god, it's just more door! Hi, hey, hello, thank god. Help, please, if you're seeing this, you need to send help to... I don't remember the address. God damn you, weed! Ruining my... thing that I use to not forget stuff. Okay, I'm calming down. Let me explain. So I was just finishing recording our Reagan episode, and then I got this email from something called Woolworth Cooksey saying that they are taking the show in a new direction. And then all the doors just locked on their own, and when I busted the hinges, there was just another door. And then another. And then another. And then another, there's another door. That was a week ago. I've been here for a week, locked in the studio, just sitting here, eating all the office snacks with all these little warmbo corn freaks running around until the camera turned on and, oh, okay. Email notification, weird, but okay. Um, dear loyal subject of Woolworth Cooksey's media subdivision, Cody Piss Incorporated. We are pleased to announce that the property known as Some More News has been dissolved and absorbed into a brand new content service designed to streamline the infotainment landscape and deliver up to the minute material for the purposes of broad audience appeal. From here on, we will be prioritizing live streamed coverage of election events, such as the Democratic National Convention and the first presidential debate happening today. Sincerely, CEO of Woolworth Cooksey, Warmbo, his last name's Lieberman? Damn. I totally forgot that Warmbo bought the show. You win again! Weed! Okay, so he wants live coverage of the debates that are today? Wait, does he not realize that the first debate is next week and we shoot these in advance? One week later. Some more Bo News presents Election 2024. Good people on both sides? Somebody please help me. I'm so hungry. I ate all the snacks and then a bunch of coffee grounds and pieces of the rug. The debates happened days ago and we're still live streaming. Is it because I forgot to actually watch them? Well, I told you already. I forgot because of the weed. If Mr. Cody wants out of here, he has to do the news. Warmbo? Is that Warmbo? Hey, 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 little buddy. Oh, long time. No, see, look, I know you're mad at me, but I need you to please let me. Okay, fine. Okay, fine, Warmbo, who I missed so much. We'll play your little game. Okay, I missed the debates, but let's talk about the Democratic National Convention. Here's some Morbo news. The Chicago DNC was a few weeks ago, I think. Time is a dense fog. Anyway, it was fine, you know? As good as it gets when you condense a bunch of nerds into a single building. Did good TV ratings. Each night did almost as well as the Oscars, so, as a show, I guess it was successful. I mean, no one watches TV anymore, or the Oscars, really. So anything helps. It's good stage design. No real broadcast hiccups to speak of. C-SPAN's stream was a little blurry for me, but that could have been my internet, so. Ugh. I guess I should talk about it from a political standpoint. Yeah, that makes sense, that makes sense. Okay, um, mostly vibes. I guess the theme was for the people, for our future. And as described by convention chair Minion Moore, quote, the story here is simple and it's one that will resonate with Americans across the country. Kamala Harris and Tim Walls are fighting for the American people and America's future. Donald Trump is only fighting for himself. Not untrue. Except as the days went on, that story they were telling felt like a lot of platitudes mainly, which I guess is often what a story is. Not that there's anything wrong with a lot of platitudes, at least at a political convention. After all, whatever will be, will be. But going into this, one of the advantages the Democrats had was the fact that, unlike Trump's first run, the Republicans have been pretty light on policy, at least vocally. 
He can't run as an outsider looking to clean the swamp. Why didn't you clean the swamp when you had the chance, buddy? Why? Oh, why didn't he clean the swamp? Oh, head scratcher. And because he's had to distance himself from Project 2025, he can't really use it when referring to his plans. Also, he's like, not making much sense these days. And the backfiring of Project 2025 is a really good example of Democrats playing offense for a change. And so the DNC was a good opportunity to continue that offense and begin to roll out specific policies. But as the media coverage indicates, it doesn't seem like people think they did that. Instead, the DNC was mostly centered around broadly presenting themselves as the party of joy and togetherness. Thank you for bringing the joy to this fight. Our nation with this election has a precious, fleeting opportunity to move past the bitterness, cynicism, and divisive battles of the past. That kind of politics also just feels better to be part of. Let us choose joy! Joy! Ah, it burns us! I'm not saying that political conventions can't be fun or exciting, but it kind of started getting gratuitous. Parties are fun, but at some point, I'd like to know how I'm going to afford an ambulance someday when the party takes a turn. The nomination process was pretty much every state trying to name drop harder than the last. Spike Lee, Sean Astin, Ava Longoria, Wendell Pierce, famously known for his role in The Twilight Saga, colon, Breaking Dawn, part two. Little John was there for Mayor Pete's sake, not to mention the Tony Goldwyn. You know, from a little old movie known as The Pelican Brief. That's like Avengers Endgame for law students and airport book enthusiasts. Of course, Michelle and Barack Obama were up there. A real drone strike of charisma, those two. Not to mention Kamala's husband, Douglas Emhoff, who, it turns out, is an absolute snack. And so it's understandable that Democrats gloated a bit and compared it to the low energy display back at the RNC while painting conservatives as the weird little angry guys with the tiny penises and whatnot. There's the childish nicknames, the crazy conspiracy theories, this weird obsession with crowd sizes. At least Mike Pence was polite. Let's be clear, it's not woke that limits economic growth, it's weird. And it's an agenda that does nothing for our neighbors in need. Is it weird? Absolutely. Absolutely. They seemed very focused on the neighborly aspect in that the GOP were bad neighbors or bad boyfriends. The other day I heard someone compare Trump to the neighbor who keeps running his leaf blower outside your window every minute of every day. Donald Trump is like an old boyfriend who you broke up with, but he just won't go away. Hey now, which is it? Pick one, coordinate, like good neighbors or boyfriends. Anyway, I think a lot of this is what you would expect from a political convention. But it definitely seemed like the DNC was especially charged by the fact that the extremely old guy wasn't running anymore and a much more articulate and less death inclined person was taking his place. Everything suddenly felt new, as if perhaps it's easier to be charged up about a candidate if elections didn't drag on for more than a year. The hope was palpable. The hope was so able to be palped that it formed an oily mist in the air capable of making all who inhale it forget about how hard they fought to keep Biden in the race just a month earlier. Remember that? Remember how a lot of Democrats in the media said it would be impossible to swap candidates before the election? And that it was like, racist somehow for the old white guy to step down and then we did that and it was fine i mean i guess we'll see no <laughs> you'll see actually i'll starve to death but the people generally we will see the point being that while there was joy and hope and tony goldwyn from cuffs you can't help but wonder how many delegates and speakers were grinning through their surgically perfected teeth but never mind the haters Let's get to the big event, starting with the most anticipated speech of the week. Please welcome actor and director, Tony Goldwyn. There he is, he looks great. What? 
No, 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 please, just let me have this. I... Fine. Fine. Biden was also there. Thank you. I love you. Aw, they love him. And he loves them. So this was pretty much the- ah! What the hell is that? Truth alert! With Wombo. Welcome to Real Time Facts Checks with Wombo. Fact news Wombo for some Wombo Wombo news. Now, in the previous clip of Mr. President Joe Biden, Mr. President Joe Biden, um, he said, I love you to the crowd. Wombo rates this as mostly false! Assuming he was speaking to the audience in the convention center and not the Wombos watching from their homes, Chicago's United Center has a maximum capacity of 23,500 Wombos. And so there's no way that Joe Biden, Mr. President, could, um, could know everyone there, let alone love them. Wombo reached out to someone who attended the DNC to confirm that he did not know Joe Biden and therefore Joe Biden couldn't love him. Do we have a clip? I can confirm he has not met me. And I've been looking on Grinder every five minutes. Thank you, Robert. I'll see you real soon! Love is defined as a deep feeling of kinship of personal ties. And so that's why Wombo gives President Mr. Joe Biden, sir, he gives, he gives him four out of five golden two-faced Mr. Cody line faces for saying he loves the crowd. Okay, back to you, Mr. Cody. Uh, thank you? Wombo? So Biden headlined on day one to really lube up the crowd. It was generally what you would expect in that he made it clear he was graciously passing the torch to Harris while standing up for the various accomplishments of his term. He was joined by Hillary Clinton to complete out the out with the old theme, it seems. And as a first day headliner, Biden was pretty good, I guess. He was fired up. He was fully juiced. And to be fair and junk and stuff, there were moments when specific policies were talked about, like how his administration created a bunch of manufacturing jobs. He also nodded to the fact that trickle down economics was bad and even some Democrats had unfortunately bought into it. Check out our most recent Reagan episodes. Biden also spent time saying what Harris's administration would actually do. Creating more jobs, standing up for workers, growing the economy, Lower the cost to American families so they just have a little more breathing room. We made incredible process, progress. We have more work to do. And Kamala and Tim will continue to take on corporate greed and bring down cost of food. So yeah, good job, Joe, I guess. You didn't blank for 30 seconds, you silver minx, you. And this wasn't the only instance of Democrats pointing to specific things we need to do. Bernie, of course, Sanders, obviously, went up there and played all his hits. But of course, it's not like the Democrats listened to him anyway. Elizabeth Warren talked about price gouging to mitigate inflation, as well as taking on high rent and drug prices. But in almost all of these instances, a lot of these specifics were framed around stuff they've already done. The selling point seems to be that Democrats are better at running the country and therefore should continue to do that. Here's a rapist perfectly demonstrating that point. Since the end of the Cold War in 1989, America has created about 51 million new jobs. I swear I checked this three times. Even I couldn't believe it. What's the score? Democrats 50, Republicans 1. So he chose 1989 because he didn't want to count Reagan, but that still leaves the Bushes and Trump, and yes, the creepy old guy is correct. So that seems like a really good point he's making. And so if you're already a Democrat, it's hard to imagine why anyone would vote for a Republican after hearing evidence like that. But I actually think this exit interview tactic of recounting the good things they've done isn't as effective as they think or want. Nothing against the American people, very, very sexy people, but most Americans don't really perceive things to be good right now, even if they technically are getting better. 
We've talked about this with crime data too, more on that later. But with the economy, it's hard to look to the past as a way to sell people on the future. It's like when someone tells you that inflation is going down, but what they're actually saying is that the rate of inflation is going down, which is good. But that still means that prices are going up, just at a slower rate. If a doctor said, good news, the bleeding is getting slower, we'd still be worried about the bleeding. Also, more than half of Americans think the doctor is the one that stabbed them. So when we got to Harris and Walls, I think a lot of people were ready to hear what they were going to do, as opposed to what we've already done. We had all our jollies out with the joy and the vibe, so we were ready to get down to business and hear about the future. If you're a middle class family or a family trying to get into the middle class, Kamala Harris is gonna cut your taxes. If you're getting squeezed by prescription drug prices, Kamala Harris is gonna take on Big Pharma. If you're hoping to buy a home, Kamala Harris is gonna help make it more affordable. And as president, I will bring together labor and workers and small business owners and entrepreneurs and American companies to create jobs, to grow our economy, and to lower the cost of everyday needs like health care and housing and groceries. That's how we'll build a country where workers come first. Health care and housing are human rights. We will pass a middle-class tax cut that will benefit more than 100 million Americans. Cool. I'll take it, I guess. Harris also said she would pass the John Lewis Voting Rights Act, and that's pretty much as progressive and or specific as it got. They both spent a lot of their speeches talking about their childhood and background. Walls did a lot of charming football coach stuff. And of course, both of them made it extremely clear that in terms of going forward, versus backward, they at least didn't want to go backward. Say it with me, we're not going back. We are not going back. We are not going back. We are not going back. Wait, sorry, I'm confused. Which way are we going? I forgot. Okay, got it, sorry. Weed. What's striking about all of this is that when you actually look up Kamala Harris's platform as it relates to Joe Biden, she's actually way more left-leaning than you would think. She supported and co-sponsored the Green New Deal, as well as Bernie's push to make colleges free for some students. She also co-sponsored the Burns Medicare for All plan, not the Pete's plenty bold Medicare for all who want it, but just Medicare for all. While Joe was hesitant to consider canceling student loan debt, Harris was all for it. She's more well-versed when it comes to AI and tech regulations. And finally, while Joe wants Congress to restore Roe v. Wade, Harris has, at least in the past, floated the idea of adding more protections for reproductive rights. With all that in mind, she's also been more malleable than some about her platform. For example, back in 2019, when she was preparing to run, Harris said, quote, I'm not really into labels when asked about where she stood politically, which is a weird thing to say when you're trying to be the president in a political system with just so many useful labels. And while she is co-sponsored and showed support for a lot of progressive ideas, it's unclear if she's still aligned with a lot of this stuff today. Although we absolutely know she no longer supports Medicare for all and is apparently into fracking now. Cool. And if there's one big takeaway from both Walls's and Harris's speeches, it's that they are firmly aiming for the middle. Specifically, when it came to the very decisive issues like border security and gun control. And I learned how to compromise without compromising my values. As president, I will bring back the bipartisan border security bill that he killed and I will sign it into law. I know. I know we can live up to our proud heritage as a nation of immigrants and reform our broken immigration system. I believe in the Second Amendment, but I also believe our first responsibility is to keep our kids safe. That's what this is all about. That's what what is all about. I don't know, man. I don't think you can please everyone when it comes to stuff like gun control. 
Like when Wall says this. The responsibility we have to our kids, to each other, and to the future that we're building together, in which everyone is free to build the kind of life they want. I'm kind of wondering what he means. And don't get me wrong, I really like framing a lot of this stuff around freedom. We should be free to not be shot in a public place. We should be free to have clean and, well, free water. But in this case, he's being very broad with that word. He wants everyone to be free to do anything, but also wants to do something with guns. And so ultimately, I have to go back to the vibes of it all. Both the GOP and the Democrats are running on very few actual issues this year. And ultimately, it seems to be a race to see who is more likable. And while that's frustrating, it's probably much more frustrating if you're a Republican. Because the Democrats are more likable. They're way more likable. Walls is a lovely man. You can't deny that. Or rather, you shouldn't deny that because you're gonna look silly. And so we, of course, have to talk about the GOP response to all of this, which was... What's up, man? Ooh, wow. You look like turds. Katie, thank God you need to help me. Warmbo trapped me in the studio for like two weeks. You need to call someone and have them come here. Oh, okay. So you're talking to me now? Katie, I'm going to die. Ugh, fine. What's the address? You don't know either? No, sorry, I don't remember. You know. Because of the weed. Right, right. Well, try to go get help or something? Right, got it. I'll go... do that. Cool, great. Uh, you do that. Uh, let's cut the ads, and when we come back, I will be... hopefully not here. Oh, hello. I didn't see you there because I'm blinded by rage. Coincidentally, there's an election coming up and the first debate happened this week. And I've been getting my updates over at Ground News, which you can check out with this QR code. That's a sponsor we at the show sought out. That's both a website and an app that aggregates news from around the world, from the entire political spectrum, and allows us to compare coverage and verify our information. For example, here's a typical election story about how one of the candidates staged an illegal photo op at Arlington Cemetery. Ground News has nearly three 300 articles about this incident, comparing how different sites covered it depending on their political lean. A lot of the centrist headlines simply framed it as the US Army rebuking Trump for the stunt, while left-leaning headlines pointed out that there was an actual physical altercation. Meanwhile, the right-leaning New York Post went with the headline, Arlington incident shows media falling into same old Trump derangement syndrome. Because that's, that's definitely the takeaway from this. That darn deranged media always pointing out illegal stuff Trump does. And you can get all these headlines plus context on each publication over at Ground News, aka ground.news slash smn. You can see just from this one example how what they're doing is more important today than ever. And I encourage you to check them out. Be sure to check out their 2024 presidential election page to follow all the breaking news, explore key issues, and see blind spot stories that aren't being covered nearly enough by the media. So again, that's ground.news slash SMN for 40% off unlimited access. The link is in the description. I still can't see, but that's okay. I can smell you. Mm. Hi, it's Katie from News. And ever since I started getting Warmbo's newsletter, I've been a bit more concerned with security. I mean, I did not think he knew my address. But luckily, our new sponsor is Simply Safe. We've partnered with Simply Safe to offer an exclusive 50% discount. Just visit simplysafe.com slash more news to claim it. I'm not big on fear mongers. I don't think everyone needs to monitor their home. But if you have a warm bow in your life, Simply Safe is the easiest and hassle free way to feel secure. Or, I don't know, maybe you just want to watch the squirrels outside your house. They're so cute. And you got to make sure they're safe and not getting eaten by a puppet. And I can't actually physically watch them all the time. But whatever your reason, 
Simply Safe provides 24-7 live guard protection for a fast response. Their agents can act within five seconds of receiving your alarm. It also works right out of the box, has no contract, no hidden fees. Hassle-free! Unlike unsubscribing to a certain chilling newsletter. That's mainly about what Cody does during the day and also Game of Thrones, I guess. I don't know. It's all over the place. But anyway, right now, Simply Safe is offering an exclusive 50% discount on a new system plus a free indoor security camera with fast protect monitoring. All you need to do is visit simplysafe.com slash more news to claim this discount. But the offer is for a limited time only. So be sure to order today. You got your hand on that order button? So again, that's simplysafe.com slash more news. There is no safe like Simply Safe. Am I still here? Ah! Crud. Still me. Locked in the studio. Katie went to come get me, I hope. What's taking her so long? Hey, so weirdest thing. I seem to be locked in my house. Dang, he got you too. Okay, let's put our heads together. How long can someone last without food? I mean, I just went grocery shopping, so I think I'm actually good for a while. I could probably just chill out here. <gasps> the new season of Tulsa King is about to drop too, so... <laughs> right. Of course. Okay, hi, I'm still alive for now. So we went over the DNC and spoke a lot about the need for a little more meat on that bone. It's a nice bone though. There was also a lot of focus on Trump specifically. And again, not a fan of Trump, very tired of that guy, which is also why I don't wanna hear about him a lot. And at this point, there's nothing particularly inspiring about how your side is better than the obviously bad crime guy that everybody hates. When he talks about America being a failing nation, he says we're losing. He's the loser. He's dead wrong. Ah, yes. I, for one, don't think the country sucks. Thanks, Joe. So let's move on and discuss how... Wah! It's time for the truth alert with Wombo! Please no. Truth alert with Wombo! Welcome back to Real Time Facts and Checks with Wombo Fact News Wombo for some Wombo Wombo News here speaking to you on it. Okay, so did you see that previous clip of Mr. President Joe Biden? And Joe Biden said that Mr. Donald Trump, former president, was dead wrong about stuff? Well, but, but, Wombo is gonna wait that, a smelly lie of Wombo's truth albedo of telling truth, because, well, when you're dead, you can't have opinions on things, right? So, it's, it's impossible for dead things to be wrong. Wombo spoke to an expert on being around dead things, and the expert said this. Hi, I'm Wombo, expert on dead things, and having seen a lot of dead things, I can collaborate that dead things can't express opinions or be wrong, because when you die, you kind of stare off into the middle distance, and you get very still, and you no longer are anything because dead things are no longer alive, and when you die, you simply become an object of cold meat and bone, a swollen, hollow vessel for uncaring darkness of intangible neutrality, where even time cannot be observed because there is nothing to observe it, because your consciousness no longer exists. Thank you. Thank you, Warmbo. I might need a minute to process all of that, but for now, I'm going to swallow those emotions and use Warmbo's fact check there to talk about the media response to the DNC. Because you know how the media is impartial and that means that they have to equally and obsessively fact check the DNC as much as they do Trump, even if it makes them look like obtuse freaks? And Donald, well, Donald told us to inject bleach. It's misleading. Yes, Donald Trump did make ill-informed remarks, we remember, at a COVID press briefing in April 2020, wondering about whether scientists could somehow test or study the possibility of treating the virus by injecting disinfectant into people. Yes, those comments prompted household disinfecting companies to warn people not to try them at home. But Pritzker was still exaggerating like President Biden has in making similar claims recently. Oh my God, you poindexters. Um, well, technically, he didn't tell people to inject bleach. He just implied publicly in front of cameras as the president that injecting disinfectant would help with COVID and then accidental poisoning increased. 
like I'm all for fact checking. We fact check this show multiple times and even we don't always get it right. And Democrats certainly lie and exaggerate, including during this event. But it felt like there was this need to hit some kind of quota to prove that they're impartial, turning every news outlet into your most pedantic friend. Um, aha, Biden said that Trump wants to cut Medicare, but hey now, that's a lie you see, because Trump said he wouldn't cut Medicare, even though he literally did try to do that while president. Hmm, I don't know, PolitiFact. Did you perhaps consider that the guy that has been convicted multiple times specifically for lying was perhaps the actual liar in that equation? Um, for Pinocchio's, for implying Pinocchio's nose was smaller just a moment ago because it was actually smaller several moments ago. Ah, geez, yes. Trump did once say that he thinks women who have abortions should be punished, but he, the famous liar, took that back. So it's okay now. Mostly false. It's just so weird and pathetic. And ultimately, a lot of publications had to hastily nerf their own fact checks. Like after Hillary Clinton implied that Trump sent love letters to dictators, the Washington Post ran a fact Fact check saying, there is no evidence that Trump sent such letters, which is interesting because as people then pointed out, there was evidence of these love letters. The evidence being that we saw love letters sent to Trump by Kim Jong-un back in 2021. And the Washington Post literally reported on them using the term love letters. And Trump did send letters back to him. And Trump literally said he fell in love with Kim Jong-un. So, seems pretty fucking true to me. Seems like they want to touch tips. But instead of, perhaps, deleting this fact check, they just added the line, this is in the eye of the beholder, to the article. Fucking. Huh? Was it true or not, guys? Democracy dies in the eye of the beholder? If you have to start sounding like a 19th century poet to justify a fact check, just delete the fact check. While it's not directly related to the DNC, the most embarrassing, big quotes, fact check example came from Snopes, who took on the claim that Trump said Nazis were very fine people and labeled it as false. They explained again, very pedantically, that quote, while Trump did say there were very fine people on both sides, meaning both the protesters and the counter protesters, he also condemned neo-Nazis and white nationalists outright and said he was specifically referring to those who were there only to participate in the statute protest. Okay, so Trump was only referring to the people who came there for the statue protest. Who were those people? Were they Nazis? Well, much like the Washington Post, Snopes later added a correction saying, quote, this fact check aimed to confirm what Trump actually said, not whether what he said was true or false. For the record, virtually every source that covered the Unite the Right debacle concluded that it was conceived of, led by, and attended by white supremacists, and that therefore, Trump's characterization was wrong. Right. So, let's be clear now. Trump technically didn't call neo-Nazis very fine people. He simply said that there were fine people on both sides and then lied by saying that the people he was referring to weren't Nazis, even though they were Nazis after all. Cool, that's so helpful in determining the truth for the American people. This is the kind of fact checking your big brother did when he told you that he wasn't going to hit you, but never said anything about kicking. But none of this even compares to the most embarrassing people circling the DNC which of course was the parade of right-wing grifters getting clowned harder than a bottle of Fago at a juggalo orgy. You're, so you're an anti-patriotic, anti-constitutional person crashing our party so because you, you tried question. to stop our democracy. Question. I got one question. Donald Trump called the Can Secretary of State question. of Georgia and told him to find him some votes. What is a woman? Oh my God, that is so fucking weird, y'all. Maybe you should meet one. That's big boy Charlie Kirk getting hilariously dismissed by I don't know, some politics nerd, while Chuck was lurking around the DNC. And what's absolutely fascinating about this video is that it was posted on Charlie Kirk's Twitter account, meaning that he wanted us to see it. 
Charlie wasn't the only right-wing grifter there, of course, but he would be, as Ben Shapiro puts it, absolutely destroyed on camera several times during this event. Sometimes by children. Why did you say that the civil rights bill should be overturned? Well, I didn't say that. I said it was a mistake. Why? That's crazy. Now you gotta figure it out. I wouldn't be here. That's trouble. Ah, thanks for that relevant clarification, Chuck. I don't know who that kid is. I don't know many children by name, but he would show up again after totally triggering the My Pillow guy about voter fraud. 257,000 votes. This happened last week. A judge ruled in Georgia that are missing from the 2020 election. Yeah. So this just source. came out. You're behind you, so shouldn't you? So your source is Trust Me Bro? That's your source? No, you the source, no, the source, it's in your papers in Georgia. You need to read you your news. You haven't given me you, any you last name. You need to name. read your news. No, this is your Georgia news. Yeah. This is your Georgia, this is your Georgia news. Thanks, buddy. Imagine losing a political argument to a child without that child even saying that much to you. Imagine yelling at that child because of it. And worst of all, imagine doing all of that while wearing a Panama hat. Incredible, incredible, incredible how these debate bros flocked to this event expecting to slam dunk it only to yell at that child. All of these weirdos were reminded that real life is not Twitter. It's like when Chaya Reichick got bulldozed by Taylor Lorenz the moment they met in real life. And in every case, it sort of reflects how little the far right actually knows about what leftists and Democrats and, you know, average people are like. No better example than Matt Walsh, who went to the DNC in disguise to pass out misinformation flyers about Project 2025 that led to a fake web page designed to make Democrats look like fools. Nothing desperate about that. But more importantly, his disguise was the most obvious wig that I'm almost certain is the same one he used to play a clueless liberal in Lady Ballers, because as we pointed out in our Lady Ballers episode, Matt Walsh and his colleagues have no characterization of a leftist other than like a long haired hippie type. And it's just such a fitting metaphor that he just recycled that look because he couldn't think of anything else and is bad at this, which just led to people being like, oh, is that that weird Matt Walsh guy? To which others responded, yeah, ew. In fact, Matt Walsh specifically is so bad at this that he uses this character in a fake like gotcha documentary about racism. And one of the promo clips is literally just people being like, wait, why are you acting like that? Are you an actor? Anyone else want to say anything? I'll just say one thing. I'm so glad we can have these conversations and, uh, and I'll be done. But uh, I'm just so glad that we could all get together to have these conversations. <laughs> That's Thank all I wanted you. to say. Is he an actor? He's Are you no. an actor? Oh, Can no. you let us, we're trying to listen and trying to have this conversation. Okay. They put that in the movie, apparently. Just the most obvious liar and least charismatic person in the entire world trying to do white Christian Borat. But he sucks so much and is so unfunny that people automatically know what he's doing. Pro-life. Anyway, back on track. Ultimately, this right-wing quest to infiltrate the DNC to make Democrats look like weirdos ended up doing the opposite. And we were gifted with countless videos of very normal seeming people dunking on these sweaty freaks. How many abortions have you had? How many abortions have you had? How many abortions have you had today? DNC. I'm getting paid by George Soros to have an abortion on the stage. That's rat f***er and neo-Nazi collaborator Jack Posobiec taking the very normal approach of walking up to a woman and asking her how many abortions she's had only to be zinged off the stage. And what's the most incredible thing about this is that online at least, a bunch of right-wing accounts took it seriously including prominent ones like Laura Loomer. Now you may be thinking, prominent, but she's a weird fringoid freak and professional odd person who no normal person would or should know about. And sure, yeah, obviously, but also she is prominent in that literally the president has mentioned her and says how terrific and special she is. Also, she called for the execution of her political opponents on Timcast. The political podcast, not the band. I don't know, man. I just, I just don't know how to deal with someone who, after hearing an obviously sarcastic joke, actually thinks that the DNC is going to perform an abortion on stage, especially when that claim is so easily fact-checked by simply watching with your eyes. Like, is she pretending? Probably, I don't know. And going back to the fact that Charlie Kirk 
posted that video of him getting chewed out, there appears to be a total disregard for extremely basic facts coming from a lot of the most vocal MAGA and far-right figures right now. The DNC has highlighted very clearly that there are simply two realities being seen here. And while a lot of truth is subjective, Sometimes it's simply not. And yet Mr. Cat Turd can just say stuff like, the DNC is empty, Elon emoji, and then just move on as if that isn't objectively and provably false. It's worrying, if only for like the friends and family and followers of these people. Cat Turd Jr.? But I guess I'd be more worried if I thought these people were effective in drawing in independents or normal people in any way. But instead, they seem to have completely lost any grip on charisma or relatability. Um, I'm Katie Gantz, I'm running for Vice President, good to see you. Okay. Um, how long are you working? I'm in here since uh, the beginning of July. Okay. But this year. Okay, good. How about you, sir? Uh, Almost two years. Okay, good. Just everything. Yeah, it'll be a lot of glaze, tears, some sprinkle stuff, some of these cinnamon rolls, just whatever makes sense. Oof! Why would you release that video? Just delete the file, JD. You can do that in the camera. There's a button for it. Oh my goodness. Anyway, Butler for Aliens, JD Vance, of course, had his own response to the DNC. And it was... Tim Waltz has been going around saying that he served in war, and maybe they did it in Chicago so that he could actually accurately say that he, went, he visited a combat zone. Because Chicago, I mean, look, Chicago has violent crime statistics that actually mirror, again, third world, highly violent countries. Mmm, the best zingers are the ones you have to over explain while comparing a large American city to third world violent countries. Look, you can probably tell that I wasn't exactly pickled with the DNC, but the GOP response has just been so amazingly flaccid. Have you ever heard anything described as amazingly flaccid? No, they're the first, congratulations to them. Conservatives are clearly very mad that they got called weird. And so they are really trying to throw that insult back at Democrats. But in terms of weirdness, they're just, there just wasn't much to go after. Cat Turd seems to think Kamala is a drunk or something, but nothing really seems to stick. Also, I don't know if I've made this clear yet, but his name is Cat Turd. Calls himself Cat Turd. He's just like, great. But they oh so desperately want to throw back that weird label. And in a jaw-dropping political miscalculation, it appears that a lot of people think the way to do that is to go after their children. For example, a lot of people have tried to label Harris's stepdaughter as woke and weird and unnatural despite her being like an average 20-something year old. In fact, Kamala's stepdaughter might be one of the more humanizing things about her because we got to learn that she has this hip art student kid who like probably takes a lot of artsy Polaroid pictures at parties. I don't know. And so by trying to say she's unnatural, it just makes the right sound like they don't know what average young people are like. Same with this guy tweeting out a picture of Tim Walls's family with the extremely desperate comment, just sharing, we'll let others find problems if there are any. <laughs> what? God, Twitter's so broken. You can make money for posting stuff like that. But it's just, it's just a picture of a family, like a, a pretty average family you'd see in a 90s sitcom. So I'm left wondering what this guy thinks a family should look like. Do you want them all to wear suits and mostly frown? Cause I got a family for you. I'm sorry that Walls isn't touching his daughter in a terrifying way or that his wife isn't holding a Christmas celebration on the Sith homeworld. That's just the scenario we are in right now. Again, it's just, it's just fucking odd how hard these people seem to be telling on themselves. And this extremely misguided attack on their families peaked when they decided amazingly, to dig into Tim Walls' son after he tearfully displayed love and pride for his father. Gus and Gwen, you are my entire world, and I love you. Just a lovely moment of humanity and family values that no one could deny. Not even logic baby Ben Shapiro. And yet freaks like Dinesh D'Souza would try to dunk on this? 
along with Ann Coulter, just some of the most prominent right-wing figures boldly and very publicly cyberbullying a child? What the ham's ass were these people thinking? Like, I know that they're monsters, all right? We all know that. But from a cold, calculated standpoint, I thought Republicans were the party of political strategists. Why would they ever think that this would be a good look? Have the clown freaks truly taken over? And it just really shows how far a lot of people have tumbled into that dank, dank Trump hole and how frustrated they've become that they just can't find any substantial way to attack Harrison Walls, which is ironic because there are absolutely critical things you could say about them. The problem being that the right can't do it. It's why they also can't say they're the party of the working class, even though they so desperately want to. And so after the break, we're going to say more of those things. Instead of mocking the people trying to find fault in this event, we're gonna actually find fault with this event. <sighs> Assuming I don't starve to death, which I might. I really might. Don't worry, Mr. Cody. Life is full of surprises. Some of them are good, but some are real bad. But that's why God made friends. Because while the world might change, good friends stay the same. That's a good point. Cody here. Small businesses are like children. You never have enough time for them, and frankly, you'd rather not think about them on holidays or weekends. <laughs> oh, brother. And with Stamps.com, you can give yourself a little more time by saving those trips to the post office. We love the post office, which is why Stamps.com partners with them. No matter what size business you have, they will handle all your mailing and shipping while reducing your costs. How? Is it magic? No. They offer rates you can't get anywhere else, like up to 89% off USPS and UPS. Also, time, it's money. Seamlessly connect your online marketplace with stamps.com to streamline your business. Really stream that line. No more waiting in lines. No more driving to the post office in a line of cars on the way to the post office. With stamps.com, you control your business from the comfort of your computer. All you need is a printer and some good old American guile and ink for the printer. What are you waiting for? Thor? Are you, are you? Are you waiting for Thor to grant you permission? The God of Thunder? No! Put more life into your work-life balance with Stamps.com. Sign up with promo code MORENEWS for a special offer that includes a four-week trial, plus free postage and a free digital scale. That's right, we got that digi scale! No long-term commitments or contracts. Just go to Stamps.com, click the microphone at the top of the page, and enter code MORENEWS. Oof, what is this? A business? I didn't start a business to spend all day sweating over my finances. No way. I started it to get free hot dogs at Dodger Stadium CEO Day celebration. Unfortunately, that isn't actually a thing, turns out. But all that said, if you're a business owner, you should check out Found. They're an all-in-one business banking app that lets you handle all your financial tasks with gusto. Manage money, track spending, invoice clients, and even handle those taxes. All from one easy-to-use app. Found has no hidden fees, no maintenance fees, no balance minimums. It is stress-free. Just like cool Katie. Cool as a, as a hot dog. <laughs> That's what they all say about me, because I am just so freaking cool like a, like a cold hot dog. Anyway, that's probably why they have 30,000 positive customer reviews. Like this one from Trustpilot that says, quote, I have never seen an app for freelancers, contractors, and business owners that has everything they need with such automation. So there you go. Pretty good quote. So stop getting lost in countless finance apps and try Found for free at found.com slash more news. Again, sign up for Found for free today at f-o-u-n-d dot com slash more news. 
Found is a financial technology company, not a bank. Banking services are provided by Piermont Bank. Member FDIC. Found's core features are free. They also offer an optional paid product, Found Plus. <laughs> yeah. Mm, you're so good. Oh, it's so good. Wish I had some ranch. You get it? Ranch? Hi. <laughs> hey, sorry. I uh, solved my food problem somehow by eating that guy. Okay, Cody is fed. Cody's feeling charged up. Like really charged up? Like I, I should have eaten these a while ago, actually. That was, oh my God, I'm gonna, oh, I'm gonna get so charged up. Okay, before the break, we talked about all the hilarious and failed attempts by conservatives to find fault with the DNC. Now it's time to show them how it's done and actually find fault with the DNC, which I guess is kind of what we did earlier too. And look, listen, listen, look, look, here, smell me. If everything we've ever done on this show wasn't a big enough indication, the point here isn't to trash Democrats because I secretly want Trump to win so we can keep making hot Trump con. I super duper gooper do not want Donald Trump to be the next president because folks, I don't like that guy. I think he's bad and a creepy fascist. So it would be nice if the political party opposing him was a tad more effective. So I have some notes is my point. So like, just to pick a random note, totally randomly out of a random hat. Let's say there was a genocide being committed by a United States ally. It would be nice in that random case to take a more opposing stance to that, perhaps. You know, because I do not believe I'm alone in that request. Protests are continuing here in Chicago against the Biden administration's staunch support for Israel. There are a few thousand people out on the street, but the message is the same. As you say, this is a manifestation of the frustration within the Democratic Party. Dare I say, there's something rather dystopian about having this big celebratory political convention centered around the concept of joy, while outside the building, there were thousands of people protesting against an ongoing genocide in Gaza. It kind of feels like the Democrats are just covering their ears and pretending the whole thing isn't happening, especially because the Democrats covered their ears and pretended it wasn't happening. Mark the children again. Do it again. Do it again. 18 years old. years old. You're the person. Turn around and join the uncommitted delegates. That's bad, right? Like in a really obvious Hunger Games capital kind of way. And while people have argued that speakers at the DNC, including Harris, did absolutely address that there's something bad going on in Gaza, those speakers clearly chose the absolute bare minimum way to talk about it. Once again, taking a soft and center view on a very divisive issue. I will always stand up for Israel's right to defend itself. And I will always ensure Israel has the ability to defend itself because the people of Israel must never again face the horror that a terrorist organization called Hamas caused on October 7. At the same time, what has happened in Gaza over the past 10 months is devastating. So many innocent lives lost. Desperate, hungry people fleeing for safety over and over again. The scale of suffering is heartbreaking. President Biden and I are working to end this war. There's a lot to unpack with this, obviously, but the general strategy was to hold up the October 7th terrorist attack as equally bad as, if not worse than, the murder of over 40,000 Palestinians who were dying for some vague reason, they're passively dying. Who's killing them? Who knows? I'm not saying we should ignore what happened in Israel or compare tragedies, but rather that a few sentences in a few speeches just doesn't really cut it when it comes to recognizing an ongoing genocide. And it seems especially callous to do a both sides thing here, which is literally what Joe Biden did in his speech. Those, pro those protesters out in the street, they have a point. A lot of innocent people are being killed on both sides. Hey Joe, aren't you the guy who always goes off on Trump for saying both sides? But to be fair, and both sides, both Biden and Harris and others advocated for a ceasefire that maybe they should have advocated for months and months ago. It's a little extremely late, but when they did, it was to thunderous applause. 
because now is the time to get a hostage deal and a ceasefire deal done. Of course, if you actually wanted a ceasefire, you could actually like stop giving them bombs and aid and actually change your policy on Israel. But, you know. So let's get the hostages out. Let's get the ceasefire done. But no change in policy in terms of arms and, and so forth. No, I, we have to get a deal done. Dan, Dana, we have to get a deal done. Gotta get that deal done. That deal that is, oh, it's, oh, we're so close to the deal, you guys. The deal that's definitely gonna happen. Oh, and Netanyahu, he really wants the deal and we trust him. And oh, we're gonna, oh, the, it's gonna be the best deal. The best deals. We get the best deals. Can't stop the genocide unless you ink some papes, you know what I'm saying? But going back to that huge applause at the DNC, Besides the fact that it's just the right thing to do because of all the genocide, it sure seems like addressing and condemning what's happening in Gaza is a popular political move. And yet doing this amounted to a fraction of a percent of the entire DNC, the rest of which was just broad talking points about joy and hope. And while, as I keep reminding myself, a lot of political conventions tend to focus on broad ideology instead of specifics, one of the biggest indicators of a party's intent is who they ask to speak at these things, right? The Democrats will bring out a guest that's been affected by abortion restrictions or gun violence to indicate their stance on that. The same way Republicans will bring out someone who is stabbed by wokeness or got gayed at a drag show, I don't know, whatever they do. And so what does it say about the Democrats that they didn't allow a single Palestinian American up on the stage? What does it say that supporters in the crowd were openly hostile to anyone protesting this genocide, including fellow delegates? The uncommitted movement had a pro-Palestine speaker ready to go. You can even read her speech online, and it's a good speech. It's actually very supportive of Harris and would have reminded the audience that Trump would likely be worse about this issue. From both a moral and political standpoint, it would have been extremely wise to let this person speak. It wouldn't be difficult to really push the ceasefire message on the DNC crowd when you can point out that Trump is reportedly trying to stop it from happening for his own political gain. They are there to support the Democratic Party, often blindly so. So use that support. That's why it's there. But it seems like the DNC wanted to play it very safe and aim squarely for the center of every issue. The result being these sporadic moments where my brain just short-circuited while watching. Like, besides Gaza, there was also this moment. At the very top of that to-do list is the need to get big money out of our political process. Billionaires in both parties should not be able to buy elections, including primary elections. I believe Bernie Sanders is right. There are so many reasons the American people are sick of seeing a bunch of billionaires dictate our politics for both sides. And that would have been a much more believable message if Bernie wasn't immediately followed up by this guy. Donald Trump thinks that we should trust him on the economy because he claims to be very rich. But take it from an actual billionaire. Cool. That's Illinois governor and hotel billionaire J.B. Pritzker bragging about how he's richer than Donald Trump while the crowd goes nuts. Very relatable stuff. Vote for us. We have the richer people on our side. This lack of self-awareness kept happening, even from politicians who I often agree with. You know, six years ago, I was taking omelet orders as a waitress in New York City. I didn't have health insurance. Only through the miracles of democracy and community that the good people of the Bronx and Queens chose someone like me to elect them in Congress. So glad to hear you got some health insurance, AOC. Would be neat to have some of that for ourselves. We pride ourselves on our ability to live together and advance together and prosper together across every conceivable and imaginable difference. But the thing we pride ourselves most on is that we believe the future happens in California first. 
Oh, hey, Gavin, you must be pretty tired from personally kicking people out of homeless encampments, but thanks for coming to talk about how good California is to its citizens. Do you sleep in a tub of Vaseline, Gavin? I don't know, maybe it's a good political strategy for the Democrats to court conservatives and independents that are sick of supporting Trump. But the result was a whole lot of moments that were straight up interchangeable with what you would see at the Republican National Convention, specifically when it came to military strength and aggressive patriotism. As commander in chief, I will ensure America always has the strongest, most lethal fighting force in the world. The awesome responsibility that comes with the greatest privilege on earth. The privilege and pride of being an American. It's just kind of depressing to see how many progressive movements have been obliviously snuffed out like a classroom gerbil. And how clearly our political spectrum has moved to the right. The most devastating being the Democrats' stance on crime. Not only have they apparently omitted from their platform any opposition to the death penalty, opposition to mandatory minimum sentences, and support for marijuana legalization, but they're also parading cops around to say stuff like this. And I can testify firsthand where I come from, crime is down and police funding is up. So what that says to me is that when it comes to crime, the Republican Party has won. The same way they've systematically pushed the Democrats more and more to the right, we're seeing in real time another step in that process. They lied for years about how crime was out of control, and now that has become a truth. We're just making that concession in the interest of casting a wide net, of being a big tent party that now also includes moderate Republicans and avoids having a single bold stance on any issues whatsoever. Let's save democracy and also not really do anything with it. But you know, if there's time, maybe we'll help fund parts of your border wall. And that's especially frustrating when you think about the boldness that led to this event. The fact that Joe Biden had actually stepped down and it felt like for the first time, the Democrats actually had the ball playing actual offense for once and pointing out how their opponents were weird freaks with a horrifying plan for the future. But the moment it was time to actually slam dunk that football into the hockey net, it seems like they froze. The GOP is on the ropes, swinging at fastballs. They have no clear political solutions and are stuck with this really old guy who jabbers about Hannibal Lecter and wind bacon and has a VP pick so uncharismatic that he's been seemingly replaced by the brainworm guy. If there was ever a time to push progressive policies, it was this moment when the Democrats had captured so much of the public's attention. They had seemingly broken out of the rut that was going to be two old guys debating about golf instead of affordable housing or the minimum wage or rent increases. This was the moment. But instead, it's just the middle all the way. And I don't know, maybe that is a sound political strategy. Maybe in the interest of avoiding another Trump presidency, it's better to aim for the middle now so that we can do better things later. That is definitely how they are selling it, or rather how the Obamas specifically sold it. We cannot get a Goldilocks complex about whether everything is just right to make progress on the things we care about, the things that really affect people's lives. We, we need to remember that we've all got our blind spots and, and contradictions and, and prejudices, and that if we want to win over those who aren't yet ready to support our candidates, we need to listen to their concerns. So there you have it. It's good enough for now. Plenty bold. And if we stick with them, they super promise to actually do stuff. Stuff that's good at some point, which feels like a familiar promise. But what else are you gonna do? Vote for the worst guy? He's terrible. He wants to make us go backwards. But guess what? We won't be set back, pushed back, bullied back, kicked back. We're not going back. Democrats, at least we won't make things worse. Now I get why they have glommed onto this phrase. It's actually a very good one for encapsulating a pushback against a fascist movement. But when most Americans incorrectly think that life was better in the past, it may not be as effective as they think it is. We are drowning in nostalgia in this country, which is exactly why Trump's Make America Great Again slogan was able to get votes. Again, I get what they are trying to say here. It is a good and effective slogan. 
we're not going back. But if you're going to say that we're not going back, you also have to say where we're going instead. And right now, for a lot of voters, it seems like we're either stagnating or going straight into that trolley problem meme based on the trolley problem. You can't simply run on being the less worse party. You need to actually focus on solutions and directly address the problems, not just in this country, but your party. Because people are tired. They're tired of Trump. They're tired of war and genocide. And they're tired of having to eke by when it comes to their health care or rent. We're all very hungry for change and throwing a big joy party isn't going to help. I mean, it might help you win, but you also need to actually point people to something substantial because otherwise they're going to find sustenance wherever else they can. Speaking of, uh, uh, boy, I'm, I'm so lonely and sad right now. I wish I had a friend. <laughs> Why you in luck, Mr. Cody? Or should I call you Mr. Friend? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I got it. Oh, do you think they come in flavors? I should eat his whole family. Uh, what the? Oh God, I made him mad. Oh no, he knows I was gonna eat him. Wait, does he like, did I want to eat him? Do you like that I wanted to eat you? It's a fun game. We were playing a fun game. The other guy, he was, it was fun too. Uh, he won, he won the game. I, he got all the points and uh, the score is me, none. And the, uh, you guys have all the points. You won the game. Yeah! Angry, delicious little guys. Returning, vindictive, power-hungry warmbos. It's all coming to a head. What will happen next? Don't tell anybody. So thanks for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe. That would really help us out. Leave a comment if you'd like to also help us out that way. We've got a podcast called Even More News. We've got this show as a podcast called Some More News. And the Even More News podcast can be watched on YouTube now. It's all synergized. We've got a patreon.com slash some more news. Help us there with the clicking of that link. And help wise, linking, we've also got a merch store. Hold on. Oh, stay. Stay, everybody. Oh my gosh. I didn't put these on. We've got, oh, look at this guy. Oh, we love him. Oh, my little child. We've got him. Oh, he's they're coming out of art. Oh my goodness. Oh, it's. Katie bullying me. That's on a shirt. <sighs> and this too. We got merch. Um, thanks.